Hello, this is a quick video to talk to you about how to set up an NFED wire system antenna for your HF, either shortwave listening or your shortwave transmitting um, and HF transmitting. So basically, um, if you're somebody like myself, you wanted to save some money, you might have uh, purchased a an antenna which was basically a wire antenna, it's known as an end-fed en antenna and the end-fed um, doesn't require a dipole setup so it can just be put on the side of a house and just run out in one direction so if you don't want to have that long coax going out somewhere and you'd rather have a small system like this then you know you've got a good long length of aerial um, that's quite discreet, people can't notice it so much, they might notice the coax but they won't notice just a thin wire, it looks like a telephone wire or something like that so th there are uh, great advantages to using this type of system but one of the big disadvantages is that it's not exactly um, matched with an earth so because you don't have the earth there um, the radiation from the signal doesn't want to get out so much unless you've got an earth Okay, it will get out, but it doesn't get out as much. And also, um, you get problems with noise floor level. The noise floor um, is much higher um, when you don't have an earth in it. Um, my understanding is that you, um, if you do uh, this type of system, whereby you have um, a long pole, the wire coming down to your ballon or a tuner, directly into your tuner, and then your radio. This is all fine provided you have the earth very close to the ground. Now this is why people talk a lot about having a radio shack because the shack is on the ground and you can put an earth, RF earth, um, there is a distinction, look up difference between an RF earth and your house earth because house earth for electrical signals is different to a RF earth which is a stake put into the ground or a number of stakes um, put into the ground or a number of wires buried into the ground radials put in there that can all make up an RF earth now that's what makes your signal come in really good because without that ground then you don't get the antenna performing as well so um, I was getting a lot of noise on my system and uh, I couldn't hear this the signals so what I did is I looked around and I found uh, and and this is basically like the type of um, system I bought okay this is like the type of system so I wanted to save some money so I bought a ballon which was a 9 to 1 UN UN ballon and it takes the very high um, impedance of this um, antenna it takes the very high impedance and it turns it down to something a bit more manageable um, nine to one so if you've got a, like a couple of thousand ohms resistance it'll take it down by nine so it'll probably be a couple of hundred ohms which is a bit more manageable and um, easier to tune on an automatic antenna tuner or a manual antenna tuner like this one here with your tuning capacitors and your inductor coil so I just um, this is what's inside a tuner some of you may have seen it some of you may not you've got your capacitors which are here leaf capacitors and you've got an inductor um, these store voltage or amps and this does the inductance which is to um, affect the resistance so uh, between tuning these up you will either reduce your SWA and get a better signal, get a better tuned signal so you'll get a stronger um, reception um, and that keeps your rig obviously doing a, a sort of lot less power um, loss and there's less being reflected back in to your system so the rig isn't getting hot and there's less risk of damage so you need to have antenna tuners when you're going to use a system like this it's very important unless of course you've got a way of checking to see that your SWR is perfect if you haven't then using a antenna tuner and a meter is the safest way and an automatic antenna tuner takes all the headache out of most of this but you still have one headache left which is the one headache that nobody talks about and that is your earth because having an earth 
is only good if you're going to do it close to ground like this. If you're going to do it close to the ground and you've got a very short distance of earth cable that's fine you'll have a great time it'll work wonderfully you won't have any problems okay but if you have your ballon box and your aerial up on the side of a building much higher then you're gonna have trouble so if you're going to do it like this up in the air and your coax hanging down you're gonna have problems and the reason for that is like this okay if your radio is down at the ground you're fine if you're if you're on the second third floor of a building or a high-rise building your radio is not going to be close enough to the ground to have a perfect RF ground now if you move your radio up into an upstairs room or an attic let's say so let's just say upstairs room now I'll show you what's going to happen by drawing it in you need an RF earth so you're going to put your RF earth through the window down the side of the house and hopefully into the ground by here that would be nice yeah but this distance can get quite long in fact it can be a few meters long okay and the trouble with it being a few meters long is um, if you're in sort of like five six meters well that could be a halfway for a 10 meter band so 10 meter band would start resonating and giving you problems on that band okay um, if you basically had like my myself concrete I've got concrete instead of earth going out for a massive distance then you've got to run your earth cable you've got to run your earth cable all the way out here before you can get an RF earth okay now you imagine somebody who's on you know th this isn't just floor one or the attic you're on floor 14 of a building all the way up there yeah imagine the distance of earth cable you're gonna to have to run down there now what happens is because the distance could be very long say for instance you're on 20 meters of earth cable okay 20 meters is half wave for 40 meters so it's going to produce waves going into the earth which are going to defeat this system so that it's not going to work properly okay so what you want to do is you want to tune out you want to tune out and of course 20 meters is a long distance so the more you increase the distance of the wire the more the resistance you know the more the inductance goes up and the resistance goes up so basically you're going to get um, very very high resistance on a long cable run so this will refuse to work as an earth it might work as far as there is an earth but then the rest of this just turns into an antenna and it just starts picking up signals and sending those up into your radio like an antenna so instead of now earthing out these unwanted signals which which were causing interference and causing static instead of actually doing that because the resistance is so high it stops your earth working here and it just says the earth can work at that distance only now all you're getting is you're getting these frequencies going back up causing you all manner of crap and it, it will cause it will cause interference noise static more static you'll have as much static as you have signals you can hear so it will basically be a fight for you to hear what's going on so in this instance where you have got a long wire going to earth you've got to get rid of this resistance you've got to tune out this resistance you've got to make it disappear now how do you make that disappear will you do it with a a tuning unit okay and our tuning unit unfortunately they don't do automatic tuning units for this purpose but they do do manual tuning units and they're known as artificial grounds okay now the artificial ground can actually fool the radio system and the earth into thinking that it doesn't have the impedance there and it will allow it to work all the way down so what is a tuner and what do they look like here's a picture of an artificial ground and basically just think of this little device exactly the same as a tuner for the antenna part this is for the antenna just think of this device as a tuner that tunes the problems out of your earth okay and what you do is you connect your earth wire into this 
and then you connect it into the earth of your radio, your antenna tuner, and everything that's on your common uh, earth signal cable. This will actually go in just before it leaves the house or leaves the room and this will go in and tune out the signal problems. So inside the MFJ 931 all you've got is a simplified version of what you have with a full-size tuner. You basically have a capacitor and you have an inductor coil set which is stepped so you can you know, change the inductance on a switch, you can increase it, decrease it on a switch, or you can tune with the plate capacitors. So it's a simplified version of this. Now that got me to thinking, if you wanted to test this out without having to spend a hundred pounds um, on one of these earth ground systems, you could just use one of these and you could actually short it out so that you basically remove this part of the circuit. Okay, now the way I've done this is I've connected up a wire. So what I've done to solve this problem is I've got an, an earth. Now my earth is connected to copper piping in the house. So the other end of this is copper piping. RF likes to travel on the outside of a conductor. So the more surface area you give of that conductor, the better. So in this case, I'm just using the outer braid. And the outer braid is connected to a crocodile clip. And the crocodile clip allows me to tap in to the circuit but basically so it doesn't have to go through the connectors on the back. Okay, now I'm going to n not need this connector, I'm going to be using an input connector, but I'm going to be taking my output from the output of the inductor, the roller inductor. Okay, now my, my earths for my radio, my earths for my radio are then going to be, so my my rig earth and antenna earth and my power supply earth are all joined into these braids here. So I'm just using the outer braids again, okay? And these are basically held together. So you can just twist those together into one part. So that's now one wire. So this is the earth, this is my rig, okay? So this is the rig setup, this is the earth. Now, if we listen to the noise, okay? Listen carefully, you can hear a beacon. Okay? Now what happens when we connect this? Listen. There we go. And I can tune the noise, the noise level up and down. Can you see? Yeah, that's with it out. And just to prove to you, right? I plug it in. Noise drops down. Noise goes up. Noise. Now just to show you what happens if you bypass, if you do a bypass, so if I'm plugging in, it quietens it. Okay, now if you, if you bypass it and you just go straight to earth, it has no effect at all. You see, so it proves, it proves that by going straight to the earth bypass, doesn't affect it. So the tuning process does work. Listen. So it really does make a difference. This is the this is the diagram for a front side artificial ground device. And this is all that's inside. You've got a coil and a capacitor. So that's what's inside the MFJ. This is a homemade one, which was um, credit to uh, Doctor at ARRL um, for giving this. And basically, you don't have to have the meter in if you don't want to, just to test this out. But this is, is in principle what we're dealing with here. You've got the input going to the coil, going to a variable capacitor, going to the output, which would be 
your um, your earth so this would be the input chassis of your um, your equipment and this would be to the earth what I've actually done by by removing half of this circuit is basically taken it through and down this this channel so we're just eliminating this by tapping off here and here to actually use just this part of a tuner in order to see whether or not it makes a difference to your system and if it does make a difference to your system then maybe you need one so thanks for watching